Hi everyone, today we'll be going through a couple of rheumatology related approaches, uh, namely joint pain, back pain, Raynaud's, and hand pain. So with regard to uh, joint pain, there are a few important characterizing features. The first is the tempo, whether it's uh, acute uh, or subacute or chronic, and we look at also the onset as to whether it's an abrupt uh, onset or whether it's something that uh, gradually occurs, or whether there's an intermittent, uh, in intermittent remitting pattern to the joint pains. The next would be to distinguish uh, articular or periarticular pains. So for articular joint pains, the pain swelling and usually uh, localizes to the joint, whereas for periarticular uh, problems, they normally localize to ad adjacent to the joint. And oftentimes, there's limitation of movement with articular joint pains. Uh, importantly also would then be to distinguish between inflammatory versus mechanical joint pains and uh, the key features would be um, significant morning stiffness of more than an hour uh, as well as um, relation to activity and night pain. Uh, in terms of distribution, it is important to characterize whether it's a mono, oligo or polyarticular problem, whether it's predominantly axial or peripheral and importantly also asking for back pain and associated Enthesitis. And um, finally, it's important to wrap up uh, the joint pain history uh, with uh, uh, a thorough systematic review uh, with a focus on looking at symptoms of uh, eye symptoms, gastrointestinal symptoms, uh, rash, genital lesions and discharge, as well as a sexual history. So we go through the causes of uh, joint pains now. So I think usually we try to get the mechanical causes out of the way uh, osteoarthritis, traumatic injury, um, uh, not common things that would come out in a, in a medical uh, kind of basis exam, but avascular necrosis may be something to think about, especially in patients with uh, risk factors such as uh, prolonged steroid use. Then next, we move on to the inflammatory disorders. So um, there are primary arthritis, which would include rheumatoid arthritis, uh, as well as uh, the seronegative spondyloarthropathy. So RA usually involves uh, predominantly the small joints, the metacarpophalangeal joints and small interphalangeal joints and has a symmetrical uh, distribution and pattern. Whereas the seronegative spondyloarthropathy, um, depending on the subtype, uh, may, may have different uh, patterns. So when we look at, uh, let's say, psoriasis, there are different patterns to the arthritis. Uh, there can be a uh, RA type, OA type, um, more axial and spawn like type, uh, as well as uh, arthritis of utilance. For ankylosing spondylitis, as we all know, it's uh, predominantly uh, axial back and uh, sacral eye leg involvement. Uh, so, this is a typo, it's supposed to state uh, IBD. Uh, so, once again, the distribution of joint pain can be variable. And uh, likewise with reactive arthritis, where um, recent gastrointestinal or uh, genital urinary infection. Typically, a chlamydial infection um, with associated eye redness and rash would be suggestive of a reactive arthritis. So as we go back earlier to some of the systematic review questions, um, GI symptoms are relevant for IBD-associated uh, arthritis as well as reactive arthritis. Uh, the next important group would be the crystal arthropathies. Uh, gout and pseudogout are conditions that we see commonly in our day-to-day -day practice. However, in the PACES exam, be it for station 2 or station 5, it is important to uh, ascertain whether or not there's a, there's a secondary underlying etiology and whether or not there are any obvious precedents. So for gout, uh, underlying secondary etiology could include hematological malignancies, uh, renal disease, thyroid diuretics, or hemolysis. And um, uh, poor control can be attributed sometimes to dietary factors or dehydration. Uh, pseudogout can be associated with hypercalcemia and hemochromatosis. Uh, hence, when taking a history in these contexts, it is important to uh, ask uh, and evaluate for uh, such secondary pathologies. So we next talk about infections. So we, in infections, we have septic arthritis. Uh, we have uh, gonococcal arthritis, which may be polyarthritic or arthralgic in nature. Uh, and uh, it can be associated with tenosynovitis, there can be vesicular pastula lesions and concomitant or polyarthrogia. Uh, also of note, uh, in terms of the same vein of infection, viral illnesses can commonly cause arthrogia, 
uh, and sometimes uh, uh, reactive arthritis of sorts. Then, apart from RA and uh, the seronegative spondylar arthropathies, other rheumatological disorders like SLE, Sjogren's, Bechet's, systemic sclerosis, and even vasculitis, actually almost all the, the rheumatological disorders can, some, can cause some form of uh, joint pain uh, or, or arthritis. So it's important also to take a thorough and uh, appropriate uh, rheumatological history. And not to forget uh, the last group of uh, other miscellaneous conditions like hemochromatosis can be associated with uh, arthralgia, like picture, uh, hypercalcemia also can cause pain, sarcoidosis likewise, and even some of the endocrinopathies like acromagaly can be associated with OA of the hands. So it would be important to look for uh, such uh, concomitant pathologies. Next, we talk about back pain. So back pain, um, to some extent, is similar to joint pains. We have the mechanical causes, such as trauma, degenerative disc disease, and compression fractures. But even if the pain sounds mechanical, it's important to remember that there can still be an underlying um, medical cause because compression fractures secondary to osteoporosis or malignancy uh, can uh, cause a mechanical kind of back pain. Uh, so for malignancy, it's important to remember that uh, visceral metastatic disease or multiple myeloma itself uh, can cause uh, uh, pathological fractures. In terms of the inflammatory disorders, uh, typically for rheumatic causes would be spondylar arthropathies, the other autoimmune causes like SLE as mentioned in the, in the approach to joint pain. Uh, and infections-wise, uh, spondylodicitis is important to evaluate for disseminated infection. So in such cases, sometimes uh, patients uh, may have concomitant infective endocarditis or there could be seeding from a peripheral uh, skin or foot uh, injury in a patient with a uh, pathological uh, valve resulting in disseminated infection. Uh, TB spine is still something to think about and uh, overt abscesses uh, can happen too. Uh, of note for back pain, don't forget that there are visceral causes, visceral genetic causes of back pain, which would include uh, organs such as the aorta, where you can get aortic aneurysm, aortic dissection, pancreatitis, uh, kidney problems like stones and pyelonephritis, and some systemic disorders like hypercalcemia that can cause uh, generalized pain that can sometimes be, be described as back pains. And um, of note, the, the primary spinal pathologies uh, can cause neurological complications, of which it is important to then subtype them as to whether it's a chorda equina picture, whether they are having neurogenic claudication from spinal stenosis, or whether it's uh, more of a sciatica radiculopathy pattern uh, of neurological compromise. Next, we talk about Raynaud's. So for Raynaud's, we know that there's a primary and secondary Raynaud's. Uh, so most of the time in the PACES exam, we are looking at a secondary cause of Raynaud's and the connective tissue disorders such as systemic lupus, sorry, systemic sclerosis and systemic lupus erythematosus are probably the commonest causes that you'll see. Um, other causes like Sjogren's, uh, polymyositis, dermatomyositis, and mixed CTDs uh, can also cause Raynaud's. The next group would be some of the hematological disorders, so cryoglobulinemia secondary to um, pathologies like HEPB, hep C, and paraproteinemias um, like myeloma can also cause Raynaud's. Hypothyroidism is uh, an endocrinological cause, and some of the other rare causes like drugs, uh, amphetamines, chemo drugs, and vibrational injuries. So I'd say the commonest would definitely be the connective tissue disorders, followed by the hematological disorders, and not to forget hypothyroidism uh, in the endocrine group of conditions. And in terms of management for Raynaud's, uh, just a quick overview. So for non-pharmacological non measures, this, avoids, this entails cold avoidance, wearing of gloves, smoking cessation. Uh, pharmacological measures uh, includes usually first-line calcium, non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers like amlodipine, uh, phosphodiesterase, uh, five inhibitors, uh, and in more severe cases, a prostacycline or some other agents can be considered. In patients with, with refractory disease, uh, sympatectomy can be considered. And for the last approach of uh, hand pain, um, just wanted to quickly go through this because um, I, I, I just thought that it was worthwhile pointing out that uh, hand pain is not necessarily always due to, to a primary arthritis like, like joint pain, um, but there are other important causes to remember, such as paresthesia. So um, this can also be described as hand pain. Uh, patients with Raynaud's can also get some pain and 
and a similar condition to Raynaud's called erythromyalgia that is characterized by erythema and hand pain in conditions like poly, um, PRV, polycythemia rubra vera. It's also something to consider. And uh, along the lines of, uh, of, of vascular problems, claudication, secondary to, to vasculitis like Takayasu, um, previous uh, surgery, cervical rib, uh, ribs can also uh, be a cause of hand pain. Um, so if you take a step back, I would think of it as whether it's a primary joint problem, whether it's a vascular problem that can either be um, at the level of the large vessel, which is more the claudication picture, or whether it's at the, the, due to spasms or microvascular, which is more of the Raynaud's erythromyalgia, and neurological, which would be paresthesia. So yeah, that's all for today.